An unforgettable night during duty. One late Friday night, my partner, Alex, and I responded to a breaking and entering call. It was a type of call I'd never dealt with before, and the gravity of the situation weighed heavily on us. The distress in the caller's voice conveyed the seriousness of the situation. A young woman was alone at home and had heard ominous footsteps downstairs. Unfortunately, the 911 call got cut off before she could reveal her location. Upon reaching the home, we entered through the front door, which had been left unlocked, providing the intruder easy access. Both of us, guns drawn, loudly announced police. As we entered, bracing ourselves for a potentially armed suspect, we called out for the homeowner, but there was no response. The silence suggested that Emma, the homeowner, was understandably scared and unwilling to reveal her position to the intruder. We quickly checked the entire first floor, which was small, and found no sign of basement. However, a door shutting upstairs caught our attention. Leading the way, I headed upstairs, where all the doors had been shut. It was challenging to pinpoint the exact source of the sound, so I instructed my partner to check one room while I investigated another. Turning the doorknob and kicking the door open, I raised my gun, only to find a dark, empty room. Despite the darkness, I could hear the rhythmic breathing of someone inside. My focus shifted to a slightly open closet door, revealing half a face, mostly an eye, peeking through. Convinced it was Emma, I spoke gently, Emma, it's okay. You can come out. However, she remained silent and the breathing hushed. Moments later, my partner in the adjacent room called out, Daniel, I found her. The sense of ease I initially felt turned into nausea. Raising my gun again, I commanded the person in the closet to come out. With no compliance, I called my partner into the room. Together, we turned on a light and opened the closet, discovering a disheveled woman holding one of Emma's kitchen knives. With two guns pointed at her, she dropped the knife, and we brought her into the precincts. Grateful that the following year, I was stationed in a safer area of town, I haven't received any breaking and entering calls since that intense night. Haunted Apparition During Investigation at Night In the heart of the city, amidst the tumultuous landscape where crime rates surged 88% above the norm, I served as a police officer. This urban jungle, with its alleys echoing tales of break-ins, robberies, and assaults, had become my second home over the course of a year. Each day brought new struggles, a grim routine that defined the city's essence. Yet, within this chaotic backdrop, certain calls had the power to send shivers down my spine, and one night, in particular, etched itself into the canvas of my memory. The Stanfield Estate, a weathered mansion standing proudly on the banks of the Delaware River, served as a silent testament to the city's story past. Erected in 1894, it once sheltered Alex A. Stanfield, their partner, and four children. Since its abandonment in 1974, the mansion had transformed into a silent relic, now under the ownership of the county. Occasionally, the allure of its mystery enticed curious kids, prompting them to trespass on its grounds. One ominous midnight, dispatch beckoned me to investigate the estate, responding to a report of trespassers from a neighboring house. As I stepped onto the property, a faint light from an upstairs window hinted at an unwelcome presence. A sinking feeling enveloped me. Someone was inside, and the duty to confront them fell squarely on my shoulders. Summoning backup, I identified a shattered window as my entry point, a silent witness to clandestine activities that unfolded within. The remnants of the mansion's living room lay concealed beneath rubble, whispering tales of a begun era. Upstairs, the echo of footsteps prompted us to shout warnings, anticipating the trespassers to unveil themselves. Yet, silence persisted, forcing the realization that we had to ascend further into the unknown. The stairway, laden with debris, guided me to a room where fear and anticipation hung thick in the air. 
Every creaking floorboard intensified the sense of impending dread. A strange noise emanated from a nearby room, heightening my apprehension. Hand on my gun holster, I shouted again, desperately hoping to coax the intruders into the open. The room, peculiar and small, featured windows adorned with blurred glass film. A partially open sliding closet door hinted at a concealed presence. Armed with pepper spray, I issued a final warning before revealing the closet's emptiness. Confusion set in as my eyes scanned the room, only to find ghostly figures lurking behind the deck windows. Their silent, eerie presence sent chills down my spine. Figures, reminiscent of characters from a child's horror novel, observed me silently from the shadows. Stepping onto the adjacent deck, the figures vanished, leaving me bewildered in the moonlit darkness. The flashing lights of a police car marked the arrival of fellow officers. Describing the unsettling encounter, we meticulously searched the mansion, yet every room held only echoes of the mysterious figures. Approaching a window on the first floor, I once again encountered an inexplicable presence. As I cautiously moved closer, the object behind the window lowered, leaving us baffled. Despite a thorough investigation, the property revealed no trace of the enigmatic figures. Closing off all entrances, we left the Stanfield estate behind, the chilling memory of ghostly silhouettes etched into the fabric of that mysterious night. Unanticipated Encounter of a Police Officer I'm a rookie cop, currently navigating the night shift. My nights typically involve routine traffic stops and responding to basic 911 calls. However, an unsettling pattern emerged as I found myself called to the same house two nights in a row last week. Dispatch directed me to check out the house after someone dialed 911 and abruptly hung up. The location was a couple of miles away within my patrol zone. As I approached, the house stood in darkness, devoid of lights or any signs of life. Parking my squad car on the far side of the property, I headed to the front door, noticing all the windows were securely shut. Knocking on the door yielded no response, and the door remained locked. It appeared abandoned, seemingly untouched for years. Convinced the place was vacant, I informed dispatch and left. The following night, amidst the same shift and a similar time, dispatch relayed another 9 to 1 1 call from the same house. This time, distressing cries could be heard before the call abruptly ended. Once again, I was tasked with investigating. Though a bit farther away, the drive wasn't too taxing. Arriving once more, the scene mirrored the previous night. No lights, no cars. Approaching the front door, I discovered it left slightly ajar. Knocking again, while cautiously holding the doorknob, there was still no answer. With the door left cracked open, I informed dispatch of my intention to enter, given the urgency implied by the crying on the line. Gun drawn, I entered the house, attempting to find a light switch without success. Armed with both my gun and flashlight, the house remained mostly silent, except for a peculiar sound emanating from behind a closed door, the basement door. Calling for backup and whispering to dispatch, I descended the stairs as quietly as possible. At the bottom, I traced the noise to an old landline speakerphone, circa early 2000s, playing a dial tone on speakerphone. Putting the phone on the hook silenced the eerie noise. Almost immediately, a muffled, unsettling laughter echoed from the far corner of the basement. Turning, I discovered a man standing opposite me, hand over his mouth, engaged in an unsettling, mentally unstable laugh. His other hand held a revolver, initially concealed. As he raised the revolver towards his head, I aimed my gun and ordered him to drop the weapon. He hesitated on the brink of pulling the trigger, prompting me to fire two shots into his arm. The revolver fell, and he screamed in pain as I cuffed him and led him upstairs. Requesting immediate medical assistance, another squad car and an ambulance arrived promptly. The chilling realization set in, I was seconds away from witnessing a potential disaster. Whispers of Compassion 
A Detective's Chronicle Once upon a time in the heart of a bustling city, where skyscrapers reached for the heavens and the streets echoed with the rhythm of urban life, a dedicated police officer named Detective Emily Mitchell patrolled the streets. Emily was known for her keen instincts, unwavering commitment, and a knack for solving cases that left others baffled. One day, Emily received an unusual police report. It was a cold winter morning when an elderly woman reported her missing cat, Mr. Whiskers. While this might seem like a trivial matter amidst the city's more pressing issues, Emily approached it with the same diligence as any other case. As Emily delved into the investigation, she discovered that Mr. Whiskers wasn't an ordinary cat. The feline had been a companion to the elderly woman, Mrs. Patterson, for over two decades, providing solace and company. Emily couldn't ignore the genuine distress in Mrs. Patterson's eyes as she recounted the disappearance of her beloved pet. With a sense of determination, Emily began to unravel the threads of the case. She visited Mrs. Patterson's home, noting the signs of a disturbance near the cat's favorite spot. Consulting with local businesses, she gathered CCTV footage, meticulously piecing together the puzzle. The seemingly straightforward missing cat report transformed into a suspenseful saga. As Emily dug deeper, she stumbled upon a network of catnappers operating in the city. These criminals, motivated by the demand for rare and expensive cat breeds, had been targeting unsuspecting pet owners. It was a bizarre twist in the tale, and Emily's investigative prowess exposed a hidden underbelly of crime in the city. Each police report became a story waiting to be uncovered, and Emily's dedication to her duty turned routine investigations into captivating narratives. From quirky incidents to high-stakes mysteries, her police reports painted a vivid picture of the city's diverse and unpredictable nature. In one instance, she tracked down a notorious graffiti artist who turned out to be a talented but misunderstood teenager seeking an outlet for self-expression. Another report led her to a group of elderly citizens organizing a secret knitting club to create warm garments for the homeless during winter. Emily's ability to see beyond the surface of police reports became a beacon of hope in the community. She didn't just solve crimes, she connected with the people, turning each case into a chapter of the city's collective story. And so, in the city that never slept, Detective Emily Mitchell continued to weave tales from the police reports, ensuring that justice prevailed, stories unfolded, and the echoes of the badge resonated through the urban landscape.